Good morning, Bethel. Won't you stand up to your feet? Let's worship the King of Kings. Amen.
Can we give them a hand? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're here to lead us in worship. This morning, they have a new song that they, they sing and they worship with back in their room. So they want to introduce that to you this morning.
Give it up for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We honor you, God. We thank you for our children, Lord. And we thank you for this time here today. You are good and you are faithful, Lord. And we honor you, God, for our children learning to worship after the great I am. So, Lord, I pray that you would have your way in this place today. Have your way in this room, God. We are here. We are available. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Let's worship Bethel.
has no claim on you today, Bethel. So rejoice in him today. Come on. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declares the great has no claim on me. Jesus, he owns his victory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the one who set me free. Sing it out, come on! Death has lost its grip on me. But you have a rock in every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ. Some of us were like deserts, dry, desolate, and dead. The book of Isaiah says that he makes pools out of the desert. He makes rivers flow where there shouldn't be rivers. He saves people that the devil thought he had in his grip. If that's you today, won't you just raise your hands and give God the glory? We shouldn't be here today, church, but for the grace of God, we're in this room today, giving him praise and glory, not because of anything that we did. It's not because of we earned it. It's all because of Jesus speaking into our lives, turning our desert into pools of living water and being transformed by the very blood of the Lamb. Does that resonate in your soul today? Because it resonates in my soul. God, you're so good. You're so faithful. And I didn't deserve it, but you shed your blood on the cross of Calvary for me. And I rejoice in you today, God. You are good. Your love endures forever. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my Lord. Show us 
Your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. 
Your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. Come on, fill this room with this praise this morning. Be exalted now in the heavens. Your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. drove me to the cross and 
that love shed your blood on Calvary so that we can stand here today. We can speak to those things. We can say, chains, you must fall in the name of Jesus because my chains were defeated on the cross of Calvary. Can anybody say amen to that this morning? I don't know if you heard me, but I just said, my chains were defeated on the cross of Calvary. My fear was defeated on the cross of Calvary. My shame was defeated on the cross of Calvary. And so I give you the honor, Lord. I give you the praise, God. I give you all the glory. That's why I can sing, worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Come on, worship with me. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is, one more time, sing it with me. Worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Hallelujah. Give me a hand clap of praise, church. As you take your seats this morning, God is so good and so faithful. Welcome to Bethel. We're so happy that you decided to join us today. On your way in, you received a bulletin, and on the bottom of that bulletin is a connection card. We ask that you fill that out with as much or as little information as you're comfortable with, and place it in the buckets located in the back of the sanctuary. In addition, we have QR codes that you can please scan to fill out our online connection card. For our first time guests, please stop by the welcome desk to receive a gift just for you. Hey church. Pastor Steve here, and I want to take this opportunity to invite you out to our starting point classes. Our starting point classes are really geared for those who are newer to the church or those who are looking to get more involved, and even for those who are looking into official church membership. There's four different classes, and we run these classes on the last Sunday night of every month. So whether you're looking to find out more about what we believe or you're looking for a place to serve, Starting Point is the place for you. So come on out and join us last Sunday of the month for our Starting Point classes. Hey Bethel, Easter is coming up really quick and we are super excited here at Bethel at all the things that God has been doing with salvations, baptisms. We are so excited. So we are looking forward to what God is going to do this year for Easter weekend. And we'll be starting off on March 29th with our two Good Friday services at 4.30 and 6. And then March 31st, Easter Sunday, we'll have our 8.30 and 10.30 services. So get out there with that invite card. You can get those at the welcome desk and invite your friends to come on out. And get here early to get a seat. Saturday, March 30th is our annual Easter egg hunt. Last year, we had 300 children attend the hunt, and this year we're expecting another great turnout. We need volunteers to set up, clean up, stuff eggs, hide eggs, and a bunch of other areas. If you're interested in volunteering, or you want to sign your child up for the Easter egg hunt, go to the Church Center app. Rain, snow, or shine, we'll see you at the Easter egg hunt on March 30th. There are four easy ways to give here at Bethel Full Gospel. One, you can give online. Two, you can use the Church Center app. Three, you can send a check to 3669 Gilderland Avenue, Schenectady, New York. And four, there are giving buckets located in the back of the church. We love you. Thank you so much for coming to Bethel Full Gospel. Good morning. Church, how's everyone doing? Good. Okay. 
Whoever is praying for snow, I'm telling you, stop right now. It's not funny. It's not, okay, sorry. But yesterday I was just, plow, you know, cleaning my driveway. It was not fun. But anyway. But praise the Lord for today. Amen. So today is Palm Sunday. Wow. This been it's really fast. It's going really fast. But praise the Lord for the series that we are having at the cross. How many of you have been blessed by this series? Amen? Amen. We talk about reconciliation, substitution, propitiation. Oh, actually, you speak when you say that. Uh, redemption, forgiveness, sanctification, justification. And last week, we talked about healing and glorification. Uh, so today, I would like to talk about Palm Sunday, but in a different way that you probably you never heard before. I will be preaching in Spanish. <laughs> no, okay, I won't do that, but that will be funny to think about that. Um, from the perspective of witnessing Jesus, um, and you guys know that this is one of my passions, talk about how can we be a witness of God. Um, let me start with this. Will you... Will you listen to someone to claim to be a witness of something that they never see before? And a long time ago, uh, there was a big accident in Nicaragua. And they were talking with someone. The news came. The police came. And this guy was telling, yeah, the, it was an, the, the accident was awful. This car came here and the other one, you know, crashed and blah, blah. So they were talking with him for two hours. And then at the end, the news guy asked him, and where were you? Where, where you were here, right? And he said, no, of course not. <laughs> so, and then suddenly they caught it. Because you know, he was not a witness, right? He probably heard it, and, but, but he was not there. So what is a witness? If, um, if I have to uh, put the definition, is I have to go back to the Greek, because that's a Greek word. And it says like this, the meaning is to bear witness, testify. Also, it means give evidence, give a good report, and spread the word. So when you hear the word witness, it's someone that actually was there or experienced what he's saying. Now is the time you have to say amen to that. Amen. All right, so let's start with Palm Sunday. Why? Because I want to break this event in three parts. What happened before Palm Sunday, what happened in the day of Palm Sunday, and what happened after that. Are you with me? So let's start with the beginning. Before, a week before Palm Sunday, Jesus was in Bethany and because one of his friends died. Lazarus, you probably, you guys know the story. So Lazarus died, he showed up to the, to the house, and Martha was really sad, was really frustrated, with, like some of you are always. And, and she said, oh, if you were here, he won't be dying, Lord, why, why? And John eleven thirty nine 39 says something amazing. This is the first thing that Jesus said. He says, take, a one, take away the stone. If you remember, back in the days, they have a grave, and they seal the grave when somebody died with a huge stone. So the, 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 the odor won't be outside and all the, you know, when somebody died, that's, that's what we are. We have, anyway, so really bad smell. Jesus said, move the stone. Verse 41 says, so they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I say this for benefit of the people standing right here. There was a huge crowd right there. That they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice and says, Lazarus, come out. The dead man Stay in the grave because he, no, what it says, the dead man, is it not there? The dead man came out, his hands and his feet wrapped with strips of linen, 
and a cloth around his face, he says to them, take off the great clothes and let him go. Now, listen to me. This happened before Palm Sunday. There's a huge crowd following Jesus. There's a dead man in the grave. Jesus says, move the stone. The people actually did that. I think if I were there, probably Jesus would say, and Eric, you, you move the stone. They always make me do things that I don't want. Anyway, so they moved the stone. It was a big stone, really heavy stone. Then he says, Lazarus came out, and he came. So the people that moved the stone, just picture that. The people that moved the stone, they smell the, the odor, yes or no? Like, I was in the bathroom late, uh, earlier, and you know, I was like, oh, maybe that's the smell. I don't know. Who cares? I don't know. Anyway, but the point is this. They smell it. They touch the body. Jesus says, take the, the clothes. Bro, they saw him naked. I don't know. The point is that they smell it. They touch it. They knew. They saw that. They experienced the miracle, and also they were part of the miracle. The Bible says that when that happened, they use a lot of people from Jerusalem believe in Jesus because of that miracle. And the next day, they went to Jerusalem for Passover. Isn't that amazing? Let me make a break right here. We need people to move the stone. Now you can say, what, is, what, is, what are you talking about, Pastor Eric? We don't have that anymore. Yes, we do. You know people that are dead. Martha was saying, when Jesus says, move the stone, Martha was saying, Jesus, no, wait. He's been there for four days. Bro, it's not good smell. And Jesus said, I, I told you just to believe, Martha. Just be, relax. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. I'm in control. We have a lot of people probably in our lives that they've been dead for so long. And you guys have no hope for them because they've been dead for so long. And you say, well, why I have to do that? And I'm, I'm tired to talk about Jesus with this person. He did never listen. Keep doing it. Move the stone. But you don't understand. He's in drugs and alcohol. He's crazy. He's in uh, so many medications. He, he won't listen. Move the stone. You don't understand, Pastor Eric. You don't know my family. Move the the stone. But Pastor Eric, why are you saying that? Because I'm not saying it. Jesus says, move the stone. There's a lot of people that need to hear that. There is hope in Christ. And when he says, come out, he came out. Because it's in his time. It's not in your time. Let's talk about the miracles here in Bethel. Let, do you want to go Pentecostal a little bit? Yeah? Don't tell Pastor Steve. Actually, he's up back there. He's, he don't care. Let's go Pentecostal. I want to see miracles in the, in the church. I've been pastoring this church with Pastor Dave, Pastor Stephen for like more than a year. And I see miracles here. More than 30 people last year, people came to the Lord and they give their life to the Lord. Some of you are right here sitting. You've, yeah, some of you have been baptized. I've seen that. That's a miracle because the Bible said and look that when a, a, a sinner repent, there is joy in heaven. So when you raise your hand to accept Jesus like your Lord and Savior and you're like, bah, 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 we're maybe with Hispanic music. Bah, 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 bah. Why? Because they were happy that you did your commitment with God. That is a miracle. You have, um, let me ask you this. Have you seen that in Bethel? Yes. So you are a witness of God. You've seen the miracle. You've been here before. Yes or no? I saw you drinking coffee every morning. Yes. You've been here. Probably sleeping, but you've been here. I know that you've been here. <laughs> I've seen you. You've been part of this miracle. And you know what? God is telling you, move the stone. And when the miracle happened, God is saying, take the clothes off. Help them. Teach them. Give them a good example. Amen? Praise the Lord for that. You want to give to the Lord an applause for all the people that has given the life to the Lord. Jesus is looking for people that spread the good news. 
know your good thoughts about the Bible. No. Can, can I make a parenthesis here? Don't, people don't care what you think sometimes. <laughs> and, and you know that and you keep saying. But why not let's share the word of God, right? There's, <laughs> there's no mistake in the word of God. Know what you think. Remember, just the word of God, the love of God, what God did in the cross for you. Let's share good news to people. So that happened before Paul Sunday. It was an amazing miracle. And the Bible says that a, a big crowd were following Jesus, of course. Can you imagine the crowd? <gasps> I was there in the miracles. You remember the crazy dude was, he was dead in the grave and I touched him. Oh, man, it, it was smelly. And now he's alive. He's right there. Lazarus and Lazarus, what up? What's going on, my man? You, you're the one who took my clothes, right? You, I'm sorry for, you know, it's not always like that, but you know, I get it. Yeah. You know what? God wants to use you. But he needs people available. I don't know if you are available. Are you this morning? Are you awake? Yeah, all right, all right, good. So that happened before. So the people that start spreading the good word, the, the good news, right? And John 12, 9 says, Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had risen from the dead. So people came to Jerusalem to see Jesus because of the miracle, but they also came to Jerusalem to touch Lazarus. Let me see if that's true. They say that he was dead. I want to touch him. I want to see if it's true. And also, let's bring, you know, a, a lamb because it's Passover and let's have fun. But you know what? Let's go in to, to talk to Lazarus for So there was a huge crowd. They came from uh, Jerusalem, uh, Samaria, Galilee, all the air, the, 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 um, the place um, to do this. And that time, the population probably in Jerusalem was three. 30,000 people, but in that day, it was double or triple. Let's call it there was 100,000 people because they want to know about lesser. So they, uh, 100,000 people came to Jerusalem, and it's funny to think that everyone will bring in probably a lamb or offering, and there was a lot of lambs. They have to be killed for the sacrifice, right? You remember the story. Everyone come to the, te the temple with an offering for Passover. And the perfect Lamb of God was walking among them and they didn't realize it. They were celebrating Passover, the perfect Lamb, and the perfect Lamb of God was just there. Isn't that crazy? I heard a lot about Palm Sunday. I heard that it was about Jesus as a king, but I actually think there was more Jesus as a savior. The first thing that happened when Jesus showed up, there was a big opposition to the gospel. Luke 19, 37 says, when he came near to the place where the rod go down, the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God and allow voices for all the miracles that they have seen. Blesses the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. So the Pharisees were not happy. In fact, in John 11, it says that they were trying to kill Jesus and also Lazarus. The guy was dead. Jesus raised him from death, and then the, the Pharisee says, let's kill him again. <laughs> That's the opposition, right? And Jesus was like, I'm not going to do that. Can you imagine 100,000 people like shouting, you are the king? And he also said, if, if they don't do that, the stones will, will do it. I'm not going to do that. So you will have opposition in your life. As a witness of Jesus you probably have the opposition of the world. The world, unfortunate, yeah, will hate you. 
the world doesn't like Christians. They don't like Christian principles. There's a lot of false doctrine. Also, an opposition can come as a flesh. Sin, pleasures. There's a lot of people that are looking for pleasure. And something that I see here that is really powerful are the Pharisees. There is something that I call modern day Pharisees. So what, what, what you can say about that, what, you can think, what is that? That there's no Pharisees in Rotterdam. Well, if I may, <laughs> they are. <laughs> they don't call themselves Pharisees and they don't dress in like Pharisees in the, Old Te- in the New Testament. But they are the people that they never share the gospel with anyone but they always have something negative to say about faith of others. Have you, have you encountered with a Pharisee lately? I, I do. I see it all the time. I, I get excited. I'm like, oh, God will do a miracle in Bethlehem. They're like, there's a lot of snow outside. I don't like the black because you're worshiping the evil. No, the dude, I'm like, just be quiet. <laughs> We're trying to do our best. We're trying to preach the gospel, and I would like that you join us on Wednesday night, by the way, and to learn how to share your faith. What we need is people that spread good news, no bad news, (laughs) right? What we need are Christians that talk about Jesus, not about what they think. What we need is people that preach about the gospel and not preach about the politicians that they liked. What we need is people that go back to the basis, right, and then read the Bible, and they do what the Bible says. That's it. That's a good Christian. That's a good witness of God. How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, when somebody says something to you, say Pharisees. (laughs) Another thing that happened, a misunderstanding about Jesus. When Jesus showed up in a donkey... A lot of people start shouting, oh, you are the king. But in Matthew 21 says, when Jesus entered to Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowd answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. That was not a good answer. (laughs) Jesus was not only a prophet. Now, you have to understand this. Yes, the prophet, the, 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 pro, the prophetic mi- uh, ministry of Jesus was amazing. He can tell you the future, but also he was showing you who he was, the son of God, not only the prophet. This is really important that you understand because there's a lot of false doctrines that there is telling you that Jesus was just a man, he was a prophet, and I just don't believe that is true. I believe that Jesus is The king of kings, the Lord of lords, my savior. Not just a king, not just a prophet, but the one that can save you from hell. Now, hell is real, yes. And it's really sad that a lot of Christians are living their life thinking that there is not a real place. It is real, and I'm praying that God revealed to show you in a dream so you can see that it is real. Amen. (laughs) I say, oh, Pastor Eric, yes. We need him. We need, we need to see that. You know why? So we can have compassion for others and start preaching the gospel. Anyway, so the people took branches uh, of palm trees, and that's basically a symbol of the Jewish nationalism since the time of Maccabees. Maccabees were uh, a, a, a big war that they have in the 400-something before uh, Christ, Um, And they look at Jesus like a politician, like a national savior, like someone that will save them from Rome only. Now you can say, wow, so the Jewish were so messed up. Well, America is not the exception either. If I may, we live in a beautiful country, but our culture is so messed up. We need Jesus today. They knew only war because, remember, the Babylonians took uh, Jerusalem, Persians, Greeks, Romans. So they were waiting for a leader. They were waiting the new king 
that takes away all the taxes, that take away all the oppression that they were living in, but they didn't want a spiritual savior because they were comfortable with the law. Today, God wants to change that mindset in your life. Also, what we can find in uh, Palm Sunday is the, uh, the same crowd, the same 100,000 people changed their speech in a week from blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord to crucify him, crucify him, hitting him on the head with the staff, spitting him on his face, mocking him, and finally took him to the cross. The crowd didn't understand who Jesus was because they did not understand that he was the son of God, the spiritual savior. There's a lot of people, they just want alleviation, but they don't want recovery. You, you have to say amen to that. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Come on. It's in the video. I will rewind. A lot of people just want alleviation, but they don't want recovery. There you go. Okay, you are awake. Great. Why I'm saying that, I think Pastor Stephen mentioned this example. If I break my arm, right? And I, I, bah, let's break my arm. Sometimes I sleep in, in my arm and I wake up and I'm like, where's my phone? <laughs> right? I don't know if it happened to you. I don't know. And, and I go to the doctor and I say, hey, I need uh, painkillers for a year. The doctor will say, but what? what? Why? Yeah, because I just want to feel, no, I don't want to feel pain. But, Okay. So it will give me, that won't happen, just in case that you are figure out. No, that won't happen. But it's an example. After the year, after the pain medication, what will happen with my broken arm? Thank you. We're still broken. Why? Oh, yeah, yeah, technically, yes. Why? Because I never recover the arm. I just want to feel good all the time. But I'm still broken. It was the same example with the crowd. They want the king, they want the benefit, they want everything, but they don't want the spiritual savior because they don't want to surrender to him. Amen? I don't want that to happen to you. Now, you can say, okay, well, Pastor Eric, so you're talking about a bad witness, but how can I, I can be a good witness? That's a really good question. Before that, let me ask you this question. What is it stopping you to be a good witness of God? You can say, oh, you know what, Pastor Eric, maybe, maybe it's my past. And I would look at you and I would say, is it really your past? <laughs> because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, this is a new creation, brother. So you're new. Your past is in the past. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. That's what the Bible said. God is giving you a new identity. He's giving you a new purpose in the kingdom of God. I love the, the, the image when God changed the names of the people sometimes. And if you remember the, the preach from TTI guy from da David uh, Wilms, Nelms, when you're going to heaven, he will give you a stone with a name that only you and God will know. Revelations 2. That's amazing. Because he wants to change your name. He's changing your identity. So someone, when somebody says, oh, you know what? You are a drunk guy. You are a drug addict. You are a, a, a blah, blah, whatever. You will say, no, I'm a new creation of God. I have a different identity. I have a purpose now. Is it fear? Do you know that the Bible records 365 times to not fear? Do you know that the Bible said that you have a spirit of power, love, and self-control? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to share who you are. I don't believe in a I'm sorry. I don't believe in a Christian. He's telling me I'm a Christian, but I don't preach the gospel. Seriously. Seriously? <laughs> Is it someone that claimed to be 
a football player and never talk about football. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Are you a chain? Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. So you have power in your life. How can you be a chain for power? I am not a chain. <laughs> the gospel is power. Or you can say, but Pastor Eric, look at me. Oh, I'm so poor. I'm not a good communicator. I don't know what to say. Have you heard that people, right, when they say, you want to preach? I'm like, I don't know what to say. I'm not a good communicator. Well, first of all, look at me. I'm in front, yeah, that's true. I'm in front of you. This is my second language. I shouldn't be preaching in English, but I'm doing it. Why? Because I want to preach the gospel. I want to encourage you to do it. I've been preaching this since I'm eight years old, nine years old, because that's who I, who I am. Amen? Now, let me give you an illustration so you understand what I'm trying to say about the power. Um, where is Vanessa de Jesus? All right, there you go. Give it up for Vanessa the Jesser in the house. She is really ashamed right now. But anyway, remember the, the gospel is power. Okay, so what, what do I have in here? Wow, you guys are really hungry. So this is a pizza box. Everybody, pizza, oh my goodness. Okay, this is a pizza box, okay? So what this box is used for. This is so simple. Come on. Give me more. To deliver, thank you, who delivered a pizza inside. Yes or no? What is your favorite pizza? Let's say pepperoni. You guys are Italian. Everyone loves pepperoni. Anyway. So let's say that today, after service, you order a pizza, right? And you say, let's, let's order a pizza. And then <clears throat> what, do you, what you expect, right, is the delivery guy brought you a pizza in? In a box, right? But what if, just what if, this delivery guy, really tall guy, really big guy, delivered the pizza in his bare hands. And he comes to your house like that, really sweaty, right, and says like, hey, here's the pizza. Put it in your table, and all the grease is coming from his arm. And like, uh -huh, that's good. And he's, at the end, he says, hey, it's 20 bucks, bro. <laughs> if that happened to me, I would look at him and say, yo, what up, bro? Hey, what are you doing, man? Why? Because he is missing what? So are you telling me that this costs 10 cents? This is just cardboard. Are you telling me that when you pay 20 bucks, you're expecting 10 cents cover a box to deliver something that it costs $20? Do you know that I asked my wife, hey, honey, can you go to the, this pizzeria, please, and ask for a box? And she offered to pay, and they say, no, just take it. This doesn't cost anything. Why? Because what is important is not the box. What is important? The pizza. Let me tell you something. This box is you. This box is me. Without the gospel of Jesus, what you are is just an empty box. Without the pizza, you have nothing inside of you. You're empty. What you need to have is the powerful gospel of salvation and deliver it to so many people so people can eat and be okay with God. So your value is not in the box. So stop talking about that you're awesome, that you have this gift, that your hair is amazing, that you have a beautiful house, a beautiful... Yes, yes, and yes, but the most important thing that you have in your house, in your life, is the gospel of salvation. Without that, you're an empty box. Listen to me, church. This is really important. I was sleeping and I wake up with this statement in my head. God was telling me, tell them that they are dead. Hey, dude, this is so heavy. I don't know if you understand. If God is telling me, tell them that they are dead. First of all, I was like, am I dead? 
I'm so, I don't want to be the one, right? You, you. Now you can say, but what are you talking about? I'm, I'm here at the church. This is Holy Week. Pastor Eric, come on, man. You know, I'm good. No, no. I, are, you, are, you, are you full or are you empty? Are, are you sharing the gospel? I, I know that you're successful. I know that you have a house, you have a, you have a nice car. That you don't go to the mechanics. They're really bad people, though. I've been there. That you have this, you have that. Yeah, but what is inside of you, bro? Is it, is it a really good pizza or it's just like, it's a cold pizza, really hard? Are you sharing what you have? Are you sharing the gospel? But you can say, but they don't need it, pastor. They're okay. They look good. No, God is telling me they're dead, bro. They look good outside, but inside they have nothing. They're empty. And you have something that they will fill them up that will be amazing. But if you're not sharing it, nothing will happen. So how can we be a good witness of God? We need to preach the gospel and word and deed. I love four examples in the Bible about this. Mary Magdalene, we talk a lot about her. She was an awful sinner, but she was the one on the cross. When Jesus was dying, she was on the cross. And not just that, when Jesus was, and the thir- after the, the third day, she was the first in the grave. I love her, you know why? Because she, she had the seven demons, that's what the Bible says. She was awful. She, was, she had a terrible past, but when she found Jesus, she was faithful to the end. And I preached to her, and the third day she sang, I'm going to the grave. And the disciple, why are you going there? She, he, he died, he's dead, he's inside of the grave. And she said, you know what, but I still love him. I just want to do something for him. But he is dead. I, I, I picture Peter. But he's dead. I don't care. I love my Lord and Savior. He found me and I love him. And when she show up with the perfumes, thinking that she will do something for him, she find out that he was not there. She saw an angel. And the angel told her, what are you doing here? He's alive. He promised that he always will be with you. He's now here. Amen? Another example, his, his, his mom, Mary, was there seeing his son being crucified with the same people they were singing, Oh, Hosanna, hallelujah, now kill him, kill him. You know how he, she, will, she will probably be crying in that time. The family is so important. You have to preach the gospel to your family, mainly. Oh, but they don't believe, Pastor. They're awful. Don't care. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Because in the time that they're ready, they will came out. Amen? Another example is John. John was, this is Pastor Stephen talking, but, but he mentioned that probably he was a teenager at the time. I picture him, this young man, so close to Jesus, following everywhere he go. And when he was in the cross, he was there saying, I love you. I want to be with you. And lastly, I see the thief on the cross. When Jesus was at the cross, he had two teeth, one on one each side. One of them, he was telling him, oh, come on, save yourself. You saved so many people and you're saving yourself. Ha, ha, ha. And then the other one said, you know what, hey. Stop it. He's a good guy. We are we, we're terrible people, but he's not. And you know what? He told him, when you remember me, when you come in your kingdom, and Jesus says, I won't do that. I don't want to remember you. Today. Today you will be eating with me in paradise. And now you're eating pizza. You will be probably eating lasagna with me, bro, because I have so many stuff in heaven for you. I have so many things for you that I want to show you because you're a good witness. I will call the, uh, the, the, the worship team to come. This is what happened in Palm Sunday. People misunderstood who Jesus was for them. 
and the cross. And you can say, oh, these Jewish people are re really awful. No, I think that we are also misunderstanding that he's not just a healer. Listen to me, church. Jesus is not just a healer that you come every Sunday and ask for healing and that's it. No, he's also your Lord and Savior. He's the most important person that you have in your life. M most important that your wife, that your husband, because he is your Savior. Now you can say, oh, well, good, great story, Pastor Eric. The healing Lazarus was powerful. I love it. Uh, how to be a good witness. I love it. But what happened after the, 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 the Palm Sunday story that you were talking? Okay, yeah. Let me go to the Bible. Luke 19, 41 says, Has he approached Jerusalem and saw the city? He wept over it. That's it. Can you picture that image? He made an amazing miracle. He raised someone from dead. Lazarus is there. His family is there. Disciples are there. A hundred thousand people probably were there. And all, and all of them, they were saying, Hosanna, you're the king, you're the prophet, you're a savior, you are blah, blah, blah. And everybody with the palm, uh, 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 the palm branches saying, hey, you're Hosanna, you're amazing, Jesus. You are in the weird donkey, but anyway, you're amazing, you're awesome. And when he came to the city, he started crying. Why? Are you telling me that he's been praised and he cried? That doesn't make sense. The Bible has errors? No. The answer of that, why he cried after Palm Sunday, is in, in, the, in the following verses. Let me read it to you. And he says, even if you, even you, have only known on this day what will bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes that the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you and, and, and on every side, then will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone and other because you did not recognize the time of God coming to you. He was there. He was trying to save them from, from their sin. He was trying to heal not just the body, but also their souls. And they did not understand at all. They thought that he will bring weapons to Jerusalem and then start revolt and start another word. And he started crying, saying, you don't understand. I want to save you. And they were like, no, we're fine. We just need another king. We just need more finances. We just need money. We just need not to pay the taxes anymore. That's what we need, Jesus. Don't tell us what to do. All we know and all we want is this. And he said, no, you don't understand. You need to change your life because the gospel is power. Because if, you, if your life is changed, the rest will come in their time. But what about the promised land? I am. But what about the healing? I am. But what about peace? I am. And he started crying. We celebrate in the Holy Week. How many of you have grabbed one of those and share your slight pizza to others? I will strongly encourage you today, pick one, one of those invitations and share what you have inside of you. Say, see you next week. I want to invite you to, to an amazing party 
probably later lunch for Easter, I want that you change your life. Oh, I'm sorry. Jesus will change your life forever. Will you, that for, for, will you do this for me, for this humble servant of God? Raise your hand if you want to do it. Amen. Pick one up. Close your eyes. I want to finish this sermon with this invitation. It touched my heart when Jesus was crying for the second time in a month. First, because someone was dead, someone that he loves, Lazarus. And the second time that he was crying is because someone was dead spiritually. I don't want that you steal in the same thing all over again. I want you to be free. Jesus is coming. This is the perfect time that you can give your life, that you can ask the Lord, will you use my life, God? Will you use my talents, my family, everything that I have, everything that I am, will you use me, God, this Easter and be your true witness? And you can say, but pastor, I have this situation. I know. I will ask I will ask the prayer team to come please. I want to give you this invitation. Please. If you need to receive God, come here to the altar. But if you need a miracle. I see a lot of people sick and and when I say sick, I'm not saying just the body. I'm saying emotionally, mentally, the enemy has destroyed so many families lately. But I believe that the same voice that says, move the stone, the same God that was saying that is in this place right now. And he can say, move the stone now. Come out and live for his glory. Amen. Let's be at your feet, please. And if you need prayer, please come to the altar. Please come confident that he is alive. Please come, but come with your faith in your hands that I need this, pastor. Oh, I need prayer for this. Come on now. I feel that there's a lot of people that need to renew, that they need. If you never have filled with the Holy Spirit, come now. God want to fill your emptiness with his Holy Spirit. Please come now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Chains fall, fear bow here now. Jesus, you change everything, lives here. Hope found right here and now. Jesus, you change everything, chains fall. Fear must bow here now. Jesus, you change everything. Lives here, hope found here now. Cause Jesus, you change everything.
change it all right here, right now. Show us your glory, oh God, right here and now. Change it all, change it all. Sing chains fall, chains fall, fear bow here now. Jesus, you change everything, lives here, hope is found right here. You have the power. Change it all, chains fall, fear bound, right here, right now. Jesus, you change everything, change everything. Lives heal and hope is found, right here, right now. Jesus, you change, Jesus, you change, Jesus, you change. God, whether we recognize it or not, we need you. And so I pray, Holy Spirit, that as we leave this place, as we walk out these doors, God, we would recognize our need for you. We would humble ourselves under the mighty power of the almighty God. We would recognize your authority and we would say, Father, I can't do it on my own. I can't do this thing on my own. I can't share the gospel on my own. I need you to fill my box right now because without you, I'm empty. Without you, I'm nothing. I'm just a broken vessel. But God, with you, I am more than enough. I am more than capable. 
because you fill us, God. So I pray that you would fill every person in this room today. Fill them with your spirit. Fill them with your presence. Fill them with a fresh anointing. Pour it out from heaven, oh God. We pray it now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you, Bethel Full Gospel. Thank you for coming out. Go in power today. Amen.